टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेक ए क्लास ऑन ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन प्रीवियसली वी हैव डिस्कस द टॉपिक शॉक एंड हैमरेज वी नो द ब्लड हैज वेरियस कॉम्पोनेंट्स द सेलुलर कॉम्पोनेंट एंड द प्लाज्मा इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द ट्रांसफ्यूजन ऑफ ब्लड एंड इज वेरियस प्रोडक्ट्स blood is transfused it has its various indications for uh, blood transfusion and the first the very first blood transfusion was successfully carried out in the year 1818 which was performed by james blundell who performed the first transfusion that is human transfusion in a woman suffering from pph that is postpartum hemorrhage this patient received blood from her husband and luckily she survived but the important part was that the blood grouping system came much later and it was done by karl landstiner in the year 1901 karl landstiner discovered the abo blood grouping system which is the most important blood grouping system others are rhesus blood grouping system depending on the antigen which is present on the rbcs others are rare blood groups are duffy kale and bombay blood group are also known in the year 1914 belgian physicist albert albest hustin performed the first non direct transfusion using sodium citrate as an anticoagulant i'm saying non direct transfusion because earlier the transfusion was direct from one patient i mean the uh, donor to the recipient the one who is donating the blood is the donor and the one who is receiving the blood is the recipient so in 1818 it was a direct transfusion of blood and in 1914 the first non direct transfusion of blood was performed because the blood could be kept in a solution of sodium citrate which is an anticoagulant because the blood has the tendency to clot if it is kept outside for more than a certain period of time in the year 1926 that is the second world war the british red cross society instituted the first blood transfusion service in the world and the research system the rh system was identified and recognized as the major cause of blood transfusion reaction in the year 1939 so it was first abo blood grouping system then the rh system which was identified because it was perceived as a major cause of blood transfusion reaction now blood and blood products the blood is uh, collected from donors who have been previously screened before donating the blood this screening prevents the transfusion transmission of diseases from the recipient uh, to the recipient uh, from the donor or the possible harm to the recipient and possible harm to the donor as well due to donating a unit of blood or more so the blood is collected from a donor and it is given to the recipient after proper blood grouping and cross matching 
it this uh, prevents screening prevents the transmission of diseases certain diseases which are transmissible by blood to the recipient or possible harm to the recipient or the donor due to the effect of giving of unit of blood it may have on the functioning of various system of the donor body because if the donor has a heart problem or heart disease or kidney disease or the patient is having some taking some medicines then donating if the patient is uh, suffering from cancer or any uh, malignant disease or uh, serious morbid condition then donating a unit of blood may risk his life as well as the life of the recipient <clears throat> in many countries up to 450 ml of blood is drawn a maximum of up to 3 times a year that is the maximum and people donate blood in that way to keep the blood banks ready for any emergency or non emergent conditions and each blood unit is tested for the evidence of certain diseases important among which are hepatitis b hepatitis c both are blood born hiv1 and 2 caused by human immunodeficiency virus 1 and 2 syphilis and also malaria so these are the basic tests which are done before the donated blood is transfused to the recipient in certain circumstances the donated blood is leuco depleted that means the white blood cells are reduced in number by certain techniques as it is supposed to reduce the immunogenicity of the blood and so it is supposed to cause less immunogenic reaction or transfusion related reactions of various types which we will cover later in this topic the abo and rh d blood groups are determined and also the presence of irregular red cell antibodies is determined and the blood is processed into its various sub components so we will come to the various types of blood transfusion of whole blood and various components the whole blood is nowadays less available in civilian practice since it is used to be of it is supposed to be less efficient and uh, we have limited resources <clears throat> however there are certain advantages of using whole blood the whole blood has significant advantage over packed cells since it is rich in the coagulation factors and if fresh the whole blood is more metabolically active than a stored blood because a stored blood which is suppose if it is uh, stored in the solution for 2 to 3 weeks or 5 weeks it is less metabolically active and the uh, so the blood quality is better if it is whole blood fresh fresh whole blood is preferred the hematocrit of whole blood is 34 to 37 percent as we know we have read in the physiology and one unit of whole blood is equivalent to 450 ml and <clears throat> we know that the human body has a total intravascular circulating blood volume of about 5.5 to 6 liters in adults adult human beings so in one unit of whole blood donated whole blood there is 450 ml of volume and it can be used for a period of 21 days that is 
three weeks with CPD storage that is citrate phosphate dextrose solution. The whole blood is stored in this solution that is the CPD solution, CPD storage is basically citrate phosphate dextrose solution. Blood is usually cross matched to avoid any hemolytic transfusion reaction. So that is about the whole blood now coming to packed red blood cells or what we call in short the PRBC. These are basically spun down and concentrated packs of RBC and one unit of PRBC is equivalent to is it contains 330 ml of blood. So volume wise one unit of PRBC is lesser as compared to the amount of whole blood one unit. Whole blood one unit was 450 ml as you can see here and the pack cell one unit PRBC is 330 ml but the hematocrit the since the plasma has been separated the hematocrit is more in cases of packed red cell packed red blood cells it is almost 15 50 to 70 percent and the PRBC is stored in SAGAMP solution which is basically saline adenine glucose mannitol solution and it can be stored it has a shelf life of 5 weeks at 2 to 6 degree centigrade. So that is about PRBC. Now coming to fresh frozen plasma which we call in short the FFP. This is the plasma removed from the fresh blood and it is usually stored at a very low degree temperature of about minus 40 degree centigrade to minus 50 degree centigrade and it has a long shelf life of 2 years which is much more as compared to the shelf life of whole blood or PRBC which have a shelf life of about 3 to 5 weeks. So we can remember this thing very important that fresh frozen plasma it is stored at a very low temperature of minus 40 to 50 degree centigrade and it has a shelf life long shelf life of 2 years and this is FFP is used as first line therapy in treatment of coagulopathic hemorrhage where we are suspecting or we have investigated to and reached to the conclusion that there is a deficiency in the coagulation system, coagulation factors and there is hemorrhage due to that we will use fresh frozen plasma. One thing is important here <coughs> that rhesus positive FFP may be given to rhesus negative RD negative women in cases of requirement but repeat transfusion may lead to zero conversion and RHD immunization should be considered in pregnant women. Coming to the another variety blood component that is the cryoprecipitate. Cryoprecipitate is nothing but the supernatant precipitate of the fresh frozen plasma and it is rich in factor 8 and fibrinogen and somewhat it is stored at a temperature somewhat uh, similar to that of FFP. It is stored at a temperature of minus 30 degree centigrade and it too has a this too has a shelf life of 2 years like FFP. This cryoprecipitate is used in low fibrinogen states or in cases of factor 8 deficiency. Low fibrinogen state is known as hypofibrinogenemia. 
now coming to the platelets platelets is usually kept as pooled platelet concentrate and it contains about these many platelets per liter and it is stored at a temperature of 20 to 24 degree minus 20 to 24 degree centigrade and it has a shelf life of 5 days. Platelet transfusion is given to patients with thrombocytopenia. One is thrombocytosis and another is thrombocytopenia. So thrombocytosis means when there is more of platelet cells and thrombocytopenia is when there is less of platelets. It can be given in thrombocytopenia that is when the number of platelets is less or when there is dysfunction of the platelets with bleeding or when the patient of a platelet dysfunction or thrombocytopenia is undergoing a surgery. So if there is either obvious bleeding or there is the patient is undergoing surgery then we can give platelet transfusion to these patients. Now patients, many patients with heart disease or valvular heart disease or those who have undergone CABG that is coronary artery bypass graft or those who have undergone uh, uh, angioplasty and stenting, they require antiplatelet therapy and they are treated with medicines like clopidogrel clopidogrel and these patients while undergoing major surgery or even in certain normal condition may undergo bleeding due to trauma or anything uh, following a trauma or anything uh, like that then they may require a continuous infusion of platelet during the procedure that is during the surgery or uh, controlling of when the physician is trying to get a control over the active bleeding whether it is due to surgery or due to some other cause then we have to almost continuously infuse platelet during this procedure in order to check the bleeding otherwise the patient is going to bleed to death. One uh, compound arginine vasopressin or its analogues like DDAVP they have been used in these patients with limited success. So either you have to give platelet transfusion in patients of thrombocytopenia or uh, where there is major surgery is happening or functional disturbance of uh, uh, I mean the platelets or you can use arginine vasopressin or its analog DDAVP. Now coming to prothrombin complex concentrates. Now these are basically highly purified concentrates prepared from pooled plasma and they are containing factors 2, 9 and 10. Factors 2, 7, 9 and 10 are vitamin K dependent coagulation factors. So out, outside the 7, I mean 2, 9 and 10, this prothrombin complex concentrate contains factor 2, 9 and 10. And in case we require factor 7, it may be included separately for transfusion. These are basically <coughs> indicated for emergency reversal of anticoagulant warfarin therapy in cases of uncontrolled hemorrhage. These patients on warfarin therapy, they have chances of bleeding if they are, under, are having some hemorrhage due to any reason, then we will give highly purified prothrombin complex concentrates. Now I will talk about autologous blood transfusion which is used only in patients 
who are undergoing elective surgery. In uh, autologous blood transfusion, the patient is usually pre-donating his own blood uh, before the surgery. The patient can donate the blood up to three weeks before surgery for retransfusion during the surgery. That is the whichever elective surgery the patient is will be undergoing. So, if suppose the patient is undergoing, supposed to undergo surgery on the 30th of a certain month, then the last pre-donation which the patient can make is three weeks before the 30th, that is before within the first week of that month. So, that is an example I am giving just to make things clear. And the during surgery, the blood collected blood is collected in a cell saver many a times and which washes and collects red blood cells and it can be returned to the patient. So, the blood which has been lost during surgery, it can be again used by passing through a cell saver and which washes and collects the red blood cells and can be returned to the patient. So, that is all about autologous blood transfusion. The indications of blood transfusion are any acute blood loss to replace circulating blood volume and maintain oxygen delivery, perioperative anemia to ensure adequate oxygen delivery during the perioperative phase and also symptomatic chronic anemia without hemorrhage or impending surgery. So, these are the three main indications of blood transfusion. Now, the perioperative red cell transfusion criteria depending on the hemoglobin level are if the patient has a hemoglobin level of less than 6 probably will benefit from transfusion. 6 to 8 gram per deciliter the patient is unlikely to be benefited in absence of bleeding or impending surgery. And if the hemoglobin level is more than 8 gram, no indication of transfusion in absence of other risk factors. If the patient is not undergoing any major surgery, then here or here or if you are not thinking of any impending I mean bleeding or we are anticipating some surgery in the coming times, then we will not arrange blood or will not transfuse this blood to these patients. So, only those patients where the hemoglobin is less than 6 gram per deciliter will benefit from transfusion. But in these cases where the hemoglobin is 6 to 8 gram, we have to keep blood ready in case of any requirement happens. The blood groups and cross matching, the human red cells have uh, on their uh, cell surface various antigens and two groups of antigens which are of importance in surgical practice are the ABO blood group and the research system as I have already told. The rare groups I have said that is they are Dale, sorry, Dale Duffy and Bombay is another rare blood group. So, this is for theoretical knowledge many a times they are important. So, depending on our transfusion mainly depends on the ABO and RH system. The ABO antigens are strongly antigenic, strongly antigenic. The A, B and O are allelic genes which control the synthesis of enzymes that add carbohydrate residues to the cell surface glycoprotein. So, the red blood cells have cell surface glycoprotein and these A, B and O blood groups add carbohydrate moieties 
to the cell surface glycoproteins. This system allows 6 possible genotypes and 4 phenotypes. Now, the 4 phenotypes will be A, B, AB and O. This broadly says about the blood groups we can derive from this combination of allylic genes and their crossing during the formation of uh, zygote and the embryo. Basically, we have 23 pair of chromosomes. So, if I am giving an example, there is if it is like this a one chromosome a pair of chromosomes if it is like this a and there is o then the blood group will be a and if it is like a b and here it is o the blood group will be a b now if either of these two a b are present then the blood group will be depending on that and if it is AB, the blood group will be AB depending on this allylic genes. Naturally occurring antibodies are found in the serum of those lacking the corresponding antigen. Means a person is A positive, is having A positive blood group. It means he or she is having B antibodies naturally occurring. But if the blood group is B, then the person will be having A antibodies. So, naturally occurring antibodies are found in the serum of those lacking the corresponding antigen. Here, the lacking antigen is B, so the antibody will be naturally occurring antibody will be B and here it will be naturally occurring antigen uh, is uh, naturally occurring ant antibody will be A because the blood group is B. So, it is like that various permutations and combinations happen in this blood grouping system. Blood group O is called the universal donor because there is no antigen to provoke a reaction. I mean blood transfusion reaction. So, it is a universal donor. Blood group AB individuals are universal recipients and can receive any blood type because they have no circulating antibodies because both A and B these antigens are present. So, no circulating antibodies naturally occurring antibodies that is what I mean to say. Now, coming to the research system the rhesus or RHD antigenic system it is strongly antigenic and the antibodies to the D antigen are not naturally present unlike the AB system. So, the antibodies to the D antigen are not naturally present in the serum of individuals not having the antigen. So, antibody to RHD antigen is triggered by transfusion of Rh positive red cell or acquired which is acquired by delivery of RHD positive baby and this results <coughs> in certain condition I will explain. So, acquiring antibodies to Rh antigen are acquired Rh antibo uh, antigen antibodies to antigen Rh are capable of uh, crossing the placenta. placenta during pregnancy and Rh negative mother may cause severe hemolytic anemia and hydrophytalis leading to death of Rh positive uteri, fetus in uteri. This condition happens that is the erythroblastosis fetalis. So, the Rh negative mother has developed the antibody and that has crossed the placenta 
and led to death of the fetus. That is, this condition is known as erythroblastosis, fetalis. Minor blood group antigens I have already told may be associated with naturally occurring antibodies or stimulate antibody formation. Now coming to cross matching to prevent transfusion reaction. All transfusions are preceded by ABO and RS typing of both donor and recipient blood to ensure compatibility. It is very important this compatibility between the donor and recipient blood. So, most important is the ABO and RS typing of both donor and the recipient blood. Full cross matching it takes about 45 minutes and in urgent situation type specific blood can be provided in 10 to 15 minutes where only ABO and RH matching is done in urgent situations. In emergency group universal blood can be given from a universal donor and blood is given like this O negative blood is given to females and O positive to males. So, that is the rule. Now, coming to the various complications of blood transfusion. Now, depending on whether it is a single blood transfusion or a massive blood transfusion or repeated blood transfusion, the complications vary and in case of a single blood transfusion, the most common complications are hemolytic reaction which is basically incompatibility related transfusion reaction. Febrile transfusion reaction, a fever will come, allergic reaction due to various components, infection, usually bacterial due to faulty storage, this happens and besides that hepatitis, HIV and malaria, these infections can travel from the donor to the recipient during blood transfusion. So, it is hemolytic blood related transfusion reaction, febrile reaction, allergic reaction and infections which can travel from the uh, donor to the recipient. Besides that, there is air embolism, thrombophlebitis means inflammation of the veins through which you are giving the blood, transfusing the blood, inflammation and thickening and reddening of that area. Transfusion related acute lung injury usually from fresh frozen plasma, this is very important and this happens due to HLA related problem that is human leukocyte antigen. Now coming to complications of massive transfusion, before that I will tell you what actually massive blood transfusion means. Massive blood transfusion means replacement or transfusion of blood equal to patient's blood volume, circulating blood volume that is almost 5.5 to 6 liter in a period of 24 hours. So, all of the patient's blood volume has been replaced by donor blood or a single blood transfusion of about more than 2.5 liters or that is 2500 milliliter. These usually takes place in cases of severe trauma with immense blood loss or during surgery that is primary hemorrhage, intraoperative loss of bleeding, huge blood loss during surgery. So, that is massive blood transfusion. Now, coming to the complications of massive or repeated blood transfusion, coagulopathy due to deficiency of the coagulation factors in stored blood, hypocalcemia hyperkalemia that is increased potassium level, hypokalemia, hypothermia, iron overload. One unit of transfused RBC contains about 250 milligram of elemental iron. So, if we go on transfusing blood to a patient for his requirement or whatever condition or surgery or anything else requiring blood transfusion this iron overload may happen. So, we should be cautious about this thing. So, the various complications of massive transfusion is coagulopathy, 
hypocalcemia, hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, hypothermia and iron overload. Now, if coagulopathy happens, how we manage coagulopathy? Correction of coagulopathy is not required if there is if there is no bleeding and hemorrhage is not anticipated. So, correction of coagulopathy is required only if there is bleeding or if hemorrhage is anticipated. Coagulopathy following or during massive transfusion should be anticipated and managed aggressively. So, again this point is being stressed that massive transfusion may lead to coagulopathy. In cases of blood transfusion, if there is active bleeding, prevention of dilutional coagulopathy is of utmost importance as a part of damage control resuscitation. So, dilutional coagulopathy is another problem which we must keep in mind. And in order to prevent dilutional coagulopathy, balanced transfusion should be given to prevent this dilutional coagulopathy. Now, what is this balanced transfusion? There are certain regimes to keep the transfusion balanced and the red blood cell, packed red blood cell are matched with plasma and platelet in the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 in order to keep the coagulation factors and platelets in the transfused blood so that there is no dilutional coagulopathy. So, that is balanced transfusion that is using red packed PRBC plasma and platelets in the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1. For active hemorrhages, one red cell unit is matched with one unit of FFP and one unit of platelets. This reduces the incidence and severity of subsequent dilutional coagulopathy. Crystalloids and colloids, which we use so often in case of inavailability of properly uh, matched uh, blood may lead to dilutional coagulopathy. These crystalloids and colloids we use especially during burn, hypovolemia, shock in these conditions initially during the first 48 hours and blood transfusion is not advised during the first 24 hours or 48 hours in patients of uh, burns and uh, many times uh, in patient of shock uh, there is uh, we have difficulty arranging the blood. So, we keep on uh, uh, transfusing uh, the crystal, the, uh, loading the patient's body with crystalloid and colloid in order to uh, maintain the BP and hemodynamic system. So, we should be cautious about the overuse because this may lead to dilutional coagulopathy while keeping other things in mind. Balanced transfusion approach cannot cure coagulopathy once it has started, but it can definitely prevent coagulopathy. So, this is for preventing coagulopathy, dilutional, dilutional coagulopathy, not for curing dilutional coagulopathy. Coagulation should be monitored routinely by doing thromboelastometry or with laboratory tests like fibrinogen estimation and clotting time measurement. The coagulopathies should be treated in addition to administration of balanced transfusion by various methods by giving various blood products or coagulation accentuating I mean increasing products. So, which uh, spruce up the coagulation system. Now, coming to few blood substitutes, I will mention a few of them. Now, the blood substitutes it is 4 percent human albumin which is acquired from the plasma, dextrans are polysaccharides which increases the plasma volume. They may be low molecular weight dextrans and high molecular weight dextrans, but they interfere with the platelet function and lead to 
आर बी सी रूले फॉर्मेशन रूले आर बेसिकली स्टैक्स ऑफ आर बी सी विच आर फॉर्म वन आर बी सी ओवर दर आर बी सी दिस इज कॉल्ड रूले फॉर्मेशन जिलेटिन इज अनदर प्लाज्मा एक्सपैंडर द कॉमनली यूज हिमैक्सिल इज बेसिकली जिलेटिन एंड बट इट इज लेस इफेक्टिव दैन डेक्सट्रन हाइड्रोक्सी इथाइल स्टार्च इज अ प्लाज्मा एक्सपैंडर एंड इट हैज ए लाइफ less than that of blood so these are the various products which we use besides that various artificial blood and blood products are being uh, experimented with perfluorocarbon are one of them which carries oxygen and is used as a rbc substitute and has a t half life of 7 days and stroma fi hemoglobin is another form of artificial blood now coming to erythropoietin this is basically an injection used to increase the rbc count and used in patients of chronic renal failure whether this crf is due to diabetes or hypertension these are common causes for causes of chronic renal failure now one topic i will cover this in short dic DIC means disseminated intravascular coagulation and its causes are major trauma burn or surgery and this happens due to release of tissue thromboplastin and sepsis is the most common cause gram negative sepsis and it is also seen in conditions like acute pancreatitis so in DIC i am mentioning here because there is this is also known as consumption coagulopathy and we have increased d dimer level which we assay and we have to treat the underlying condition as well as the dic for correcting this coagulopathy thank you very much